Hello everybody, glad to see you. Today we're going to talk about needed GDNT for this rotating component. Let's call it shaft coupling. In last two sessions, we have talked about this shaft at the right hand, of, right hand side. And we have talked about this balance quality grade based on, let's say, ISO 21948-31 and GISB 0905-1992. Today, we would like to talk about needed GDNT for this short rotating component. We have defined, let's say, reference axis A here, reference axis D here, and reference plane B here in order to fix this component and measure other dimension. And let's say C, this contact area, as we can see here, between these two parts. C here, we are going to have reference plane C here, A, B, C. In second step, we need to qualify other reference data. For example, for A, by using this TZ, we are going to qualify reference axis A. And then we are going to qualify this axis again by having these tolerances H7. We have envelope here in ISO standard. It means this envelope the same as maximum material for the in ASME. We can see here we have discussed about this topic previously. And let's see this reference plane B. We are going to qualify it by this flatness 0.1. And for C, again, we are going to qualify it by this value 0.02, comma, zoom. We are going to have two plane here as a C. That's why we are going to have four here, two up, two down, and then we are going to qualify it. Yeah. Now we are going to have qualified reference access, reference plane. We need to connect this right hand side to left hand side. That's why we are going to use this positioning to make this coaxiality for this axis. We are going to connect, let's say, reference axis D to A by having this positioning and having this diameter symbol and T is 0.05 respect to A. We are going to make this coaxiality for this component. And then by having this flatness for B, we are going to have this rotating component. We need to have, let's say, run out or total run out. We need to have this balancing system here. And based on this TZ for this lens, as we can see here, if it is tight, I can say let's go for run out or circular run out for this surface. If this tolerance is not that much tight, let's have it total run out respect to this axis AD. And here we have discussed again, we are going to have threaded hole. In order to have this coaxiality respect to reference axis A, we need to have this positioning and diameter symbol and TZ respect to A. We need to write this text here as a minimum diameter. And for outer surface, again, we need to have this total run out to have this balancing here. And again, for this reference, for this surface, we need to have, let's say, run out based on this TZ for this size. Here, we are going to have another example. I would like to illustrate something here regarding to this positioning symbol here. We are going to have reference plane A here, and this mid plane here we define it here as a reference plane B and we are going to have this positioning for this slot here and 
we have t is 0 0.8 respect to a and b it should be perpendicular to a and the axis of this mid plane b should be in that interval 0 0.8 just i'm going to highlight whenever we don't have this diameter symbol we are going to talk about the plane if we are going to have this mid plane but let's see this example here at bottom right it is very interesting symbol here this positioning we don't have any reference plane here see we are going to write here two multiplied by this dimension and we have positioning and we have diameter symbol here and this tz it means this left hand side and right hand side is going to be coaxial with this tz exactly we can implement this scenario for this one for this example because it is not that much long and the size of left hand side and right hand side for these two holes they are exactly the same we can use the same scenario we can have this two here by the size and have this diameter symbol without any reference to make coaxiality between these two ends now we can see here in the 3d shape I have this result from ASME. This example comes from ASME. Anyhow, let's talk about this mm, these tolerances for the for this hole. We are going to qualify it. We need to take care if we are going to qualify it, what we should write here. Here, as we can see here, the shaft will go through that it should not be in contact we are going to have let's say clearance transition and interference we would like to be here we would like to have clearance fit because here in the middle we are going to have thread here it should not be in contact maybe a sliding here or here we would like to have clearance fit if it is 40 we have this rule here we have this rule here we are whenever we are going to have clearance fit it is h7 here we can use e7 f6 f7 and now we have used h7 in this example we are here we don't have any interference here between this and this we are not in let's say transition fit we are in clearance fit and again for right hand side we are going to use this capital h and seven here h seven and if we can remember for shaft we have used let me show you we have used this h seven it means we are going to have clearance fit we are here exactly in this border between clearance and transition fit h7 and h7 we are here exactly and we can see the h7 is the last column here in the clearance fit and here let me highlight this topic in gd and t normally 90 percent the tolerances for rotating component is between g and t 90 percent it is in this interval here if it is in g we have let's say clearance and in h also we have let's say clearance fit and then we are going to have this js jk and then we are going to have interference and transition fit here also we can see here it is good keep in mind normally we are going to have tolerance for rotating component between g and t and here again i would like to talk about this tolerance let's say h7 with the diameter of 40 but where we are if i'm coming here this is 
included 40 we should come here and h7 we are here exactly yes we are here we are going to have the hole a little bit garden as, as it is between 0 and 25 micron and for the shaft if it is h7 and 40 it is here let me see yes 0 and minus 25 micron and already I have discussed about this let's say clearance fit and transition fit and interference fit we are going to have several tables we can use them based on the application and in last session in last slide I will like talk about these holes and this CC as we can see here let me show you here yes we are going to have two holes and first we are going to have positioning of this surface respect to a b and c c and we are going to have m6 here we are going to have this 5 m6 here and another 5 m6 in another side you can see here and here and then we are going to have these two multiplied by 5 multiplied by m6 and positioning and then for that hole here again we are going to have this positioning to control the location of the hole and threaded hole and here we are going to control the surface however it is the same as semicircle here and also we are going to have another hole here in the center of this model as we can see here and we need to use this positioning control to control the position of that hole and whenever we are going to use this positioning control we need to have this basic dimension we have discussed about this basic dimension for positioning control nothing more i cannot add for this shaft coupling in coming session i'm going to talk about second shaft at left hand side what is the needed gdnt for that and a step by step we go ahead and yeah thank you for today i hope you enjoyed see you next time